All right, so this is what's happening here. So j is the square root of minus 1. And to give you that imaginary part, so just remember that j, oops, let me just get there, j equals the square root of minus 1. So the next thing, these poles, you can put, see I've put this one slightly off the x-axis and those I put on the x-axis. So zeros you can put on the x-axis, poles must actually be optimally 7, 0 0.7 or 7 away. So it's about 70%. What it actually means is this is roughly going to be multiplied by 70%, those are going to be multiplied by 0. This 707 is also the minus 3 dB point. Still remember the minus 3 dB point. It should sound familiar when you do filter design. So what does this pole mean? It means we're going to get a filter and that 0 is going to take you down like that. So it's going to look something like this. And you can see it's a type of a low pass filter we're designing now. So pole 0 placement, let's go. Uh, now to place this, all zero placements, we need to get the optimal place. So what I normally like to do is, and I know, I don't know other people doing this, that, uh, sorry, any wrong file, I'm doing, we're going to put a circle in the middle here at 7.7. .7. Just, this is again just indicating, kind of an indicator. So you can see there, roughly in the middle there, If this is the unity circle, that's the 707 circle. And then you want to put your poles. Remember there we said we want to put a pole at 2 Hertz. So where's 2? We can see that's 0. There's 100. So 2 is going to be here somewhere. So theoretically you want to put your pole. Just get another color. You want to put a pole there where you think 2 Hertz is, whatever the angle of 2 Hertz is going to be. And this needs to be 707 away from your center point there. Zeros can be on the line, so they can be wherever 50 is, and they can be wherever 70 is. Now, to mathematically calculate precisely where it is, you can use school maths. Just get the copy file here for the school maths. Still remember this school mass yes we have opposite you know that that angle is 0.7 you know already know that that angle is 0.707 you know that's a 90 degree angle so what do you want if you want that offset angle so you want the op oppose one you know that 7.7 .7? so you can solve that in your equation let me just get my equation here on the side And that angle needs to be in radians. So, to make subject of the formula, you're going to take the sine this side, the oppose that side, you get this one, so it's sine of your angle times 7.7. .7. What is your angle? Your angle, remember I told you that that formula that you also did in school where you said we say y over 2 pi is the same as x over fs. Remember that full circles fs, so you can solve now for y your angle. And if you get your angle for 2, you're going to get, let me just get it here. You're going to get 2 hertz. You want the 2 hertz times 2 pi because you make y subject of formula divide by 200, you get 0 0.63. So if you put that angle in there, you're going to get your angle like so. So let's just see sine opposite. And that one, 0 0.4. So if we put the angle in there, we calculate the angle of 2, so we know 2 is this, 200 would be 0, 0 would be 0, 100 would be 180 or pi. So you know that's the angle of that one. 
you put that angle in the sign to calculate this angle here because now you know the distance so now you know that that point must be 0 0.045 up so that's your coordinate system up now you just need the coordinate system away from the side here so you're going to use the cos one to get the adjacent one and when you do the cos subject of the formula put that in there so cos of that angle with the side that you know you're going to get 0 0.7 so now you know the coordinates for that point so that point is going to be it's just right here so that point is going to be 0, 0,7 let me just me take this off again sorry that point is going to be 0, 0,706 with plus j and my j value is 0, 0,45 so the coordinate system of that is 0 0.706 and j because j is that angle is my x y angle that's 0, 0,045 so that's going to be my first pole position Let me just get my first pole position this side so that's my first pole position now remember I told you that if you have it there you must also have the one for the ghost image on the other side so the ghost image one the moment you put a pole of this axis you also have to have one exactly the same on the ghost side because 0 to 100 that's 0 to 100 there then from 100 onwards if I put a pole there I need to put a pole that one there as well so just opposite side to that will be that and now to get that second pole it's quite easy you just minus your coordinates for this second system here so there's my second coordinate list so my first one is this my second one is that can you see it's plus 0 0.45 and minus 0 0.45 but the x-axis it's still 0 0.706 away from the side so that's my first pole that's my second pole my zeros for this one we're gonna just forget about the 71 first we're just gonna make the 51 remember the 71 I just showed you to have another peak there if we do just put the 51 there can you see that I know if that's 100 50 is gonna be there so we can use this maths to calculate it but it will just be much easier to put it straight on there so well, zeros can be on the line so where is that zero gonna be it's gonna be on the line itself so we're gonna say just on the line itself there so we we can say that it's gonna be 0 x minus 1 so 0 1 is gonna be 0 x minus 1 so that 0 1 that one is going to be 0 plus 1 and then obviously the other one is on the other side why is it on the other side because we have to make the ghost frequency for it as well so the ghost stop we'll just put the ghost stop on this side so we have this one plus the ghost one so it's at 0 x 1 up that's the j there 0 x one, minus one down to zero x the minus one down so now we've placed the poles and zeros the next step now is to put it in the pole zero equation that I'm going to explain next